Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I'm here with a fun challenge today, which is all very, very exciting. So I have become a member of a second um, sewing YouTuber um, Facebook group which honestly, I can leave the information down below. There are some criteria to joining it. You have to have um, an active YouTube channel, I think at least 50 subscribers, but I think that's it, um, to be able to join. But it has um, been a lot of fun. Lindsay Johns from Inside the Hem is the one that kind of, it's a, I think it was an old one that she resurrected and she reached out to me and asked if I wanted to join. I'm like, oh my God, that sounds fun. You know, when you work here, and when you work by yourself <laughs> and, um, it's nice to have others that do the same thing that you do. You know, I don't have an office setting. I can't go to the office and talk through things with people that are doing the same type of work that I am. It's all kind of a little bit some solitary and that kind of thing. So this has been um, a lot of fun to be able to um, chat with people. And Lindsay is just really great about coming up with ideas for things. And anyway, um, there are three challenges that she has proposed for the end of the year. So um, one to kind of be done in each month. And so the idea is to get as many sewing YouTubers involved with these challenges as possible, just because it makes it a lot of fun for you guys to be able to um, search for the hashtag on YouTube and be able to watch everyone's videos. So today's video is the hashtag, I'm going to say this correctly, five questions, one take, which there are five questions that we'll all be answering, the same five questions, and the idea is that it's in one take, which means um, no editing. So, um, although to be fair, I really don't edit my videos that much as far as cutting, I mean, obviously, because I chat and get off topic all the time. <laughs> it's either that or I do a really poor job of editing my videos. No. Um, so that part isn't, isn't a, a big deal, I don't think, um, for me, but and I think it is. I think it, that that is a big deal, maybe for some. But anyway, I'm going to answer these five questions. But before we get into that, I just really want to catch you up on a few things. So, um, all right, fall. Got my fall lipstick. Brought the uh, MAC Del Rio back out. You know, I put it away for summer, and now it's back for the fall. I'm very excited about having that back in my makeup drawer. Um, well, it's always in my makeup drawer, but you know, pulling that one back out, kind of fun. Um, also, got a new computer this weekend for Tomcat Stitchery, which is very exciting. I'm going from a Microsoft platform to a Mac. Um, I've not worked on a Mac computer in years, but I was really interested and I've been doing a lot of research on the Final Cut Pro, which is the editing software that you can buy for Macs. And I think that that is just makes the most sense for what I do for a living. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be learning a new editing software. This video probably is going to be still on the old stuff that I have um, for my Microsoft, but hopefully we're going to be getting some really cool stuff. I was kind of playing around with it a little bit last night, so hopefully um, as I'm transitioning from one computer to the next um, that, yeah, they're going to see some maybe a, some cooler effects and stuff like that on um, the channel, so that's all very exciting. Um, let's see, we had family in town this weekend. My husband's family was in town visiting this weekend, so um, I got behind again on comments. I was doing so well, keeping, you know, getting all caught up and keeping up and with emails and stuff. And then we've had family in town. So hope I will get back. If you have sent me an email or with the comments, I will be back to that um, today, actually. So I'm filming this on Monday. You're seeing it on Tuesday. Um, but yes, that is the plan to get back into things. Um, and also, I um, we are going to start a sew along on Sunday. And I got permission from Kenneth from Itch to Stitch to do the Mountain View pull on jeans, which is so exciting. I'd already planned on making a pair for myself anyway, and reached out to her and asked if she would mind if I did a sew along for that. And she said, no, that sounds great to let her know, um, you know, when that's up and that sort of thing. I don't know how many weeks it's going to be yet because I have not started filming that. Um, but yes, Sunday will We'll be talking about fabric notions, all of that jazz, um, or not Saturday, Sunday for our Sunday sew along. So we will be going into a sew along and it's going to be the Mountain View pull on jeans. So that is, um, mark your calendars. <laughs> that will be up on hopefully on Sunday. Um, yes, if my week goes as planned. So anyway, that's kind of some housekeeping. I wanted to get out of the way, but let us get into these questions. So I'll write the questions out here, um, so that you can, you know, keep referencing exactly, or if you have a hard time understanding what I'm saying. And I'll also put them down below. So if you have a YouTube channel and you would like to take part in the tag, I'm tagging everybody. <laughs> All YouTube channels, sewing YouTube channels. Um, yeah, just answer the five questions below and just use the hashtag five questions, one take. And uh, yeah, we would love to all follow along and kind of learn more about each other and um, maybe find some new channels. Uh, there's a whole bunch of sewing uh, YouTube channels and a ton that are just, um, 
really good that just haven't uh, made it yet. So definitely it's a great time to discover some new sewing channels if that's your thing, which I'm assuming it is if you're here. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> definitely follow that hashtag. Okay, question one, now that it's been five minutes of me jabbering. What has your sewing journey looked like? As in, when did you start sewing? Who taught you? Any breaks? All that kind of stuff. I've talked about this a little bit on the channel. Um, so I did not grow up sewing. When I have, a, I have twins, I have boy-girl twins, and when I was pregnant in 2006, I was having a really hard time. I've always felt, I guess I should start, I've always felt kind of a pulling towards creative endeavors, and I knew that there was something there that I just couldn't figure out what it was. And actually, my um, career before uh, sewing was I was a financial analyst for the Federal Reserve Bank. So I have a, my college degree is in accounting. I have a BS in accounting and a BA in finance. And I worked as a financial analyst for the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, and then, yeah, then stuff happened. Um, <laughs> I got sick and all this other stuff. But anyway, that is a, a whole long story. But when I was pregnant, um, I was really kind of trying to figure out Obviously, I knew that I was just going to be mom because I was getting ready to have a set of twins, and that's rather all-consuming. <laughs> um, anyway, I was looking for bedding for their nursery and could not find anything that was gender neutral, but that wasn't, like, tan or, you know, just, like, neutral colors. Because I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have guessed, I'm not really a neutral palette like strong neutral palette type of person. I like color. Um, so I wanted bright colors in their room. Um, anyway, my mom who grew up with two great aunts that were professional seamstresses and they uh, were really, um, they were like my great grandmother more than my great grandmother actually was. So, um, I have a lot of great memories with them, but I never learned to sew from them either. I was 12 when uh, my aunt Lena died. So I just didn't have an interest in sewing at that point. Um, but my mom had learned from them a little bit. My grandmother doesn't sew at all. <laughs> so it kind of skipped the generation from then. Oh my gosh, I am gonna have to do a take because my battery just decided to die. I hate when it does that. It has three bars and then all of a sudden it just goes down to one. Okay, this is the one take, but I really just have to pause real quick to change the battery. <laughs> I'm already failing at this challenge. <laughs> After I just said that having the one take wouldn't be an issue. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, anyway, sorry about that. I thought I had a full battery. Um, so while my mom will say that she can't sew, she can sew. Um, in fact, she made gorgeous smocked dresses for my sister and I when we were little. And actually, she's she's really pretty good. She just It's not something she's ever practiced. So uh, when I decided I wanted to make the bed, baby bedding, I was like, okay, mom, I want a sewing machine for my birthday. And... Um, so my birthday's in February and I was newly pregnant, but I did know we were having twins because my um, blood work in confirming pregnancy, what my numbers spiked so high that um, I had to have a really early um, ultrasound. And then obviously because I was pregnant with twins, I was tracked and got ultrasounds all the time. So I actually find out, found out that I was having boy girl twins. I guess I didn't know when I, for my birthday, I wouldn't have known that I was having boy girl twins yet but I did have a, a desire to learn to sew. So that's when I got a sewing machine in February, um, but I was only, I was newly pregnant. I knew that I was pregnant, I knew that I was having twins, but I didn't know what I was having yet. And then flash forward to like June of that year where I had found out that I was having boy-girl twins and looking for bedding. And I had the sewing machine and I told my mom, I'm like, come on, we're gonna get a pattern and we're just gonna make their bedding. <laughs> My mom's like, okay. I'm like, you're going to teach me to sew. I mean, and in all honesty, with a lot of home deck stuff, um, you know, we made bed skirts for the cribs. Um, we made like a little, um, I say quilt. It was really kind of, we kind of quilted very rudimentary quilting um, for like little blankets um, just to kind of be on the bed really when they weren't there because there were so many rules of what could be in a bed and not. Made like a little valance for the room. I made a pillow for the chair in the room that all kind of coordinated. And we did do a baby, a bumper around the crib, but that ended up, once they could roll over, we took that out because we didn't want them suffocating <laughs> all, all the rules again. Anyway, so we did all of that and it was that experience and I was so big even though it was June and I didn't have them until September I was still so big um, but I was hooked from that point on so then I um, this is gonna get so long so um, from that point on we were still in Kansas City and I started doing home deck stuff for everybody um, you know my brother-in-law moved into an apartment made all of his pillows um, you know made curtains for my bedroom it was all just a whole bunch of like pillows um, home deck stuff curtains that kind of thing and I just loved it it. 
Um, I was, I did venture into garment sewing a little bit in that I made my kids their Halloween costumes. So from the time they were uh, one, basically, um, just a little over one, I made their costumes. That stopped when they got a little older only because they wanted to be like random things that, you know, we just bought them. <laughs> but I did make their costumes from when they were little, um, like one until they were probably about five or six, maybe seven, um, and then we started buying. But anyway, um, I, I delved a little bit into that and found it very interesting. So fast forward, when my kids were four, we moved to Indianapolis area and um, I decided there was a fabric store in the area that had just, like literally just opened, like right before we moved here. And um, they had, it was a, a apparel fabrics and they had some classes that they offered like garment construction. So that is when, so this was 2011 and that is when I took a class and it was a jacket making class because you know, why not um, start off on the deep end. I thought, you know, I've got an instructor here helping me like it, it will be fine and it was fine and that is where I met Joyce who is um, was my sewing mentor and our brains clicked and she was the one teaching the class and um, after the class we had, weren't able to completely finish our um, jackets I made a Claire Schaefer Vogue pattern blazer was the first garment I made for myself <laughs> It's awful. Anyway, um, but you know, anyway, so Joyce actually reached out to me after the class and um, she w was asking, you know, how it was going, like if I was able to finish the jacket. And she said, you know, I, she felt that our brains clicked real well and she was needing a little bit of help. She had moved into her home. So she had had a, an actual um, storefront and then she was kind of starting to back off work a little bit and, and, preparation for retirement. So she had moved into a studio in her home and, but needed a little bit of help. And so asked if I would like to be her apprentice and I jumped at it. Best decision I ever made. Um, worked with her until she did retire. And then I went and worked for um, the gal that bought her business. Um, yes. And so Sarah who bought her business and that is the bridal workroom that I worked in really more. So, I mean, we were working on bridal stuff and that kind of thing with, with, um, Joyce, but it was mostly like clothing, just like regular clothing that I worked on with her. But then when I was with Sarah, we were doing more, um, a little bit of like alterations and that kind of stuff, but it was the bridal workroom. We're working on um, bridal gowns that I was, um, kind of the, um, uh, you know, I did all the grunt work basically. <laughs> the boring things. So did a lot of bustles, did a lot of hems, um, did a lot of steaming and pressing and that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, that is kind of my story. I, um, from that point, I started doing a little bit of custom sewing and alterations out of my home. Uh, and then she blew up and I'll talk a little bit about why her business really blew up here in just a second. And she needed to, cause I was technically a contractor for her. I wasn't an employee, but then she needed to hire actual employees, which changed the status of her business. So then I had to make the decision if I was going to work a much more stringent schedule for her, or if it was time for me to leave so she could, you know, have, it wouldn't have been fair for me to the other employees that I could just kind of come and go as I pleased, which is what I was kind of doing with her before. Um, anyway, so that's when I started doing stuff out of my home. And then in August of 2018 is when I decided to give YouTube a try and it has now completely replaced the income I was making from the alterations and custom sewing I was doing out of my home. And that is my story. And now we're here. <laughs> that was a long, a long answer to that. Okay. Number Two. So yes, so Joyce and then behind Joyce, Sarah are probably my biggest, um, who taught me to sew the most. My mom technically taught me the, the basics, but yeah, that's kind of where it came from. All right. Describe your sewing space. Okay. I'm very lucky. I actually have a video. I will pop it up here, um, for of a tour of my sewing room and it's pretty similar to what it was in that video. Um, again, I think I mentioned in, in a recent video, I'm thinking of rearranging a few things just so I can, um, have some different areas to film just some variation maybe. Um, and I just like to rearrange. It makes it, things feel fresh a little bit. So I'll definitely film another one if I do that. But I have a sewing studio in my basement. Um, it's a complete room that was built for me, walls that were built for me for the sewing studio. And then right outside my room, um, I've got my cutting table. Um, and that is just too big to go into my room. So yeah, I have my own sewing studio in my basement, which is lovely. Everything can stay out. Um, as far as, because it says on here, is it messy, clean, um, 
that kind of thing. Um, it is mostly clean. Um, I'm a pretty organized person, but like it definitely gets messy. <laughs> And I'll find that I have piles and then I'll have to stop and, you know, put things away, um, reorganize fabric um, because it's a creative space. So I'm pulling things out and trying to decide what I want to make and what fabrics I like to go together and stuff like that. And then, you know, I have to have cleanups quite frequently. But for the most part, I mean, my mom would say that it's cluttered um, because she's a neat neck. But um, yeah, I mean, it's I definitely have clutter, but I would say it's pretty clean. All right, number three, what is it like to be a sewing YouTuber? Does it meet your expectations? Is it how you thought it would be? Reactions from others, all that kind of thing. Okay, being a sewing YouTuber, like I mentioned, it can be a little bit lonely sometimes because you don't have anyone really to bounce ideas off of. You've got family members, but they don't really do what you do. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I have found the community that we are in, our sewing community online is so great. And that has just been a real life send to, yeah, just to bounce ideas off people and get some feedback and that sort of thing. I've really, really appreciative of that. Um, as far as expectations, no, I had no idea that the channel was going to blow up like it has. I was just like, I'm just going to share some things I'm making. This looks fun. I kind of want to be a part of this. Um, yeah, and, and honestly with the YouTube thing, I knew that sewing was my passion and that there was something there that I needed to be doing with it, but I just couldn't figure out what that was. I mean, I never would have pegged YouTube necessarily because that was, st I mean, not new, but that was still kind of a new thing. Um, it just wasn't something on my radar. So finding YouTube online and then, sorry, eyeballs dried out, uh, finding YouTube and then enjoying watching other creators on YouTube and then, you know, taking that leap of faith and joining in was a, a great decision. Um, I honestly feel like this is where I'm supposed to be doing right now, um, in my career and in my kind of like my little ministry, you know, teaching people to sew, teaching people to love their bodies through their clothes and being able to fit and, um, realize the beauty beauty that's in that. Yeah, I kind of, my calling, is that a little dramatic? I don't know. <laughs> but I love, I, yeah, I really love what I do. Um, is it weird to tell people what I do sometimes? Sometimes people look at me, I feel like I'm a little old um, to be, it's an unexpected thing. I feel like I'm older, you know, not necessarily, but you know, for the most part, it's a lot of people younger than myself that have um, really made it, um, not that I've made it big, but people that are you know, able to do YouTube full time. Um, it feels like it's a little bit younger than myself because YouTube didn't even exist when I was in college. Not that it, not that it mattered. I'm not doing anything close to what I was doing in college, but, um, anyway, yeah, it's been a very wild ride and I think uh, people get a kick out of it when I uh, tell them what I do for a living. And, uh, yeah, it's such a, I mean, how lucky am I? I get to sew and be creative and in a wonderful, welcoming, warm group of people. So yeah, yeah, I'm pretty lucky. And I know that I am. All right, number four, describe your most memorable project. Um, I've touched on this a little bit. And if you've been following along kind of from the beginning, it would have been on the channel. What did it have been? Oh no, I guess this happened before the, I started the channel. So, um, like I said, I worked with Sarah down at her um, workroom and my mentor Joyce, Sarah worked for Joyce when Joyce had her storefront, so that's all connected. Um, but Joyce has uh, had the connection with the Pence family and um, she had done Karen Pence's wedding dress and her inauguration dresses when they were um, the governor um, and first lady here in Indiana. And um, Karen reached out to uh, Joyce when she, when they won the vice presidency back in 2016 and um, wanted Joyce to do, she needed two dresses and then her two daughters and her daughter-in-law also all needed two dresses um, and asked Joyce if she would do that. Well, Joyce was already retired at the time. So obviously she went directly to Sarah and they were the two spearheaders of the group. And then they pulled in, it all had to be very hush hush, but they pulled in, I was working for Sarah. And so I got pulled in and then um, three other seamstresses that are part of a professional group that we're in got pulled in as well, asked to help. And from Thanksgiving until uh, the first, First of, of January, we worked tirelessly making eight gowns for the presidential inauguration and the Indiana State inauguration that all happened in Washington, D.C. Um, so there were four dresses for each event, two for each of the ladies. Um, and that was a really cool project to work on, mostly because, I mean, I wasn't... Um, I mean, I didn't design any of the dresses. That was all Sarah and Joyce. But I got to help. I learned a ton, actually, because, um, I mean... 
worked on wedding dresses and that sort of thing, but as far as like gowns and I don't know, I just learned a ton uh, making things from scratch, not just working on them, I guess is a better uh, way to say that uh, when it came to gowns. And um, yeah, it was just, it was such a fun experience because it was such an intense time, but all six of us were like down there working together. It was a really fantastic experience from that viewpoint. And I just became very close with all those ladies just because of how intense the situation was. And we all had to be pretty quiet about what we were doing. Um, it was, you know, we laughed that we were the mice from Cinderella, you know, down <laughs> down in the workroom sewing up the gowns and stuff um but it was yeah it was a lot of fun and that was probably my biggest project well it is my biggest project that I've ever worked on and actually on my blog my I use that very loosely my website needs so much attention it's not even funny but I will link if you want to see I've got pictures of the dresses um and you can google the dresses to see them actually on the people but um I actually have pictures of just the dresses on mannequins it's on my blog so I'll link I'll link that. It's on my website, but I'll link the, um, I think it's a couple of different blog posts. Again, this was back in 2016, and that may have been one of the last times that I posted a blog on there, but they are, the dresses are over there if you want to see them. Okay, number five. What is one quote saying slash piece of advice you've gotten that resonates with your sewing or YouTube success? Okay, couple of things. With sewing, I'm going to break this up into two. With sewing, I think that the biggest, the best advice that I have received came from my mentor, Joyce, and it was just, you've just got, you've got to fail. Like, you've got to make mistakes. That's the best way you're going to learn. Don't be afraid to pull out those stitches. Um, it's just fabric. It's, you know, nothing in the world is going to crumble if you sew this seam incorrectly. Um, when I made my first leather jacket, I was at a uh, retreat with her, and I was trying to like get the slit because you know leather mark marks. So once you've poked a hole in it, the hole's there. It doesn't close back up like with fabric. And I was trying to like, how am I going to get this? Uh, the sleeve had to be sewn in in the round, and trying to figure out how to do that. And she just grabbed it from me and started pinning within the seam allowance. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and she's like, it's a leather hide. Was it expensive? You know. Yes, but you know, if you have a little, I'm in the seam allowance, like quit being so precious about things is basically what she was said. And you know, it's at the end of the day, it's just fabric and you know, nothing in the world is going to crumble if you don't set the sleeve incorrectly. Um, most sewing things can be undone and redone and that is the way we learn. So um, I think that's the best sewing advice that I've gotten and just charging on and not to be scared to make the hard things because that's where you're going to learn the most and just keep your seam ripper close and yeah. It's amazing. You know, the same thing with fit. Make a ton of things. Is it wasteful that you have garments that you don't like or don't wear? I mean, no, I mean, that's how you're gonna learn. That's just the same as if you are learning how to be a painter or an, an artist of some sort. You're gonna have a lot of bad art before you get to the good art. Um, and you've gotta use those supplies in order to get to the good art. So it's all part of the process and not to beat yourself up about that too much. And yeah, and that's how you're gonna learn the best. Um, as far as YouTube, um, I think that the best advice as far as having a YouTube channel is concerned and having a creative business is, um, and actually this I received oddly enough from my, um, uh, uh, my doctor, because he, he goes through everything with me, including like my mental state and, um, you know, just chatting, you know, not like, d d like digging deeply, but a lot of times, you know, when you're stressed that can, you know, go into other things. And he told me, he said, as long, um, another nice thing is he's also, um, a Christian. We have really good spiritual conversations when I'm in there as well, which is very helpful to me as well. But, um, he said, as long as you've got, the reason that you started your channel, he's like, as long as you have that in the forefront, and if that's the the beacon that you're looking towards for you know answering all your business decisions and for making all the decisions based on the channel, he's like, you are going to be fine. He's like, it's when you start focusing on you know, well, what's making me the most money, or you know, what is you know, am I filling other people's wants or needs for the channel? He's like, that's when you're going to run into trouble. He's like, as long as, and he was using it in comparison to his own business. He's like, as long as you keep why you started the channel and that that I guess, um, God, what's the word I'm trying to think of? It's a business word. I have a business degree. Think Whitney, think. Mission statement. <laughs> as long as you have that mission and that purpose for why you started your channel and what your purpose is in that channel at the forefront for all your decisions, then you'll be fine. And I, 
I mean, yes, the channel needs to make money, and yes, I want to take in other people's advice on things, and you know, that's how I'm gonna you know, be pushed you know, challenged and pushed creatively, but I just have to keep, you know, why, I, my why needs to be right up front for all the um, decision making. And um, yeah, and you, and that plays a lot into actually my spiritual life um, with uh, Jesus Christ and that sort of thing as well. So um, without getting too woo woo, but yeah, I, I loved that advice though. It's just as long as you keep your why straight front and front and center, then the rest of the stuff is going to play out and it's going to be fine. But the minute you lose that why, that's when, you know, things go awry. So yeah, biggest advice right there from, <laughs> from a doctor of all people. Okay, guys, that's it. That's my five questions. So again, make sure if you're a YouTuber or you're thinking of starting a YouTube channel, this is actually, um, I think when I started my YouTube channel, I did one of these challenges as one of, it wasn't my first video, but one of my first videos, and it's a great way for people to see you. So if you've been thinking about starting a YouTube channel, try the tag. It's a great way to kind of introduce yourself and um, get people to, to see you because people will be searching the the tag to learn about more channels and uh, yeah, and definitely search the, the tag to find some new sewing content because there's some really great people out there and the more people we've got, the more diverse and the more um, rich the pool gets, the better for everyone. So yes, have a look at that tag. All right guys, that's all I have for today. Um, I'm not sure what, I really would like to do, I think a Sew the Trends. I have an idea for a Sew the Trends video. I just, I need to make the thing first. <laughs> So hopefully that's going to happen. Um, I would like to do one either Friday or maybe it might be next week um, early. But yeah, I do have one coming. So if you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the fun sewing stuff that I've got coming up. And then again, we're going to start, um, if everything goes as planned, start the uh, Mountain View, Itch to Stitch Mountain View pull-on jeans sew along on uh, Sunday. Okay, that's all I've got for today, guys. I will talk to you soon. Bye!